I'll share my screen. Yeah. David shared with me yesterday some links to give you. Um, the, uh, with uh, regarding educational resources from Google. And I just stood up. There you go. If you can follow along, if you go to cissandbox.com, uh, which is the sandbox website, uh, it's the first blog post up on, on the page uh, eventually. Um, the one that says, the one, the one that has the oog in the corner for or Google. And that takes you to this page of uh, resources uh, from Google for education. <laughs> So I'm going to some of these are. You want to, we can just click through each one and I can tell you a little bit more about them. Okay. Let's see, Google Cloud for Education students. So basically there's going to be a mix of um, bringing yourselves up to speed on Google Cloud and certifications. Um, depends on the organization. AWS was really keen on certifications. Um, they're definitely they're important at Google, I would say, but not quite as important. Um, and so I would say um, these are going to just give you a really, if you go and get them, uh, they're definitely resume builders. Um, and they cover a wide variety of topics. So like the, let's see, so you know, learning Google Cloud. You want to, let's see, try the skills campaign. Let's go. <laughs> well, that's all right. So, um, If you are, I guess I would say this way in terms of certification. So if you are thinking of software development or heading, you know, any sort of um, data engineering. So there is a DevOps certification that we offer. There's also a developer certification that we offer. Subtle distinctions, but um, DevOps is much more around tools like um, CI, CD to CI, CD tools that uh, Google offers. One in particular is called Cloud Build. You can build out whole pipelines. There's another concept that I didn't mention, but it, it's really, um, it goes hand in hand with containerization is something called GitOps. They're getting a Git being the actual repository um, where you're committing code. Um, there's an extension of that where you are um, basically describing the infrastructure and resources that you need uh, in your application, like to drive your applications. Again, as that declarative YAML code, a lot of YAML these days. Um, <laughs> so you deploy everything, you keep it up in a um, repository, and then you have a whole pipeline that will actually build your apps and do continuous deployment and so on. And so that's what that DevOps um, certification is. I'm just going to focus more on stuff like that. Uh, there's one for data engineering, AI, ML, ML, and so on. Just scroll down a little bit, Mark. Need to ask. Yeah. Yeah, so these, if you wanted to um, drill into particular topics, I think these are more just like fundamental training links on uh, things like data analytics is a good call out there. I bet you there's ones on like stuff I was talking about, like DevOps, CI, CD, um, uh, let's see, what else, machine learning and so on. Those are the Coursera. Yep, so Coursera is just another, another good site for, um, finding training, uh, the more like guided structured training on um, particular topics. So uh, it'll be like fundamental products and services like Kubernetes and Anthos. It'll also extend probably, there's probably a bunch of courses that they offer on certifications. Um, there's other, there's definitely other sites out there. I'm trying to think of, I can probably send Mark a couple other ones. If you're thinking about certifications in general, there are a lot of training sites, but um, there's a couple that are, are particularly good for Google, and, and I'll share them with, with Mark. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. You guys use LinkedIn Learning? What's that? You, you, you. LinkedIn yeah, there's a, there's stuff that we do have up on LinkedIn Learning as well. Yeah. Have access to that through uh, LinkedIn for nothing. 
That's good. That's another good one. Cool. Um, we have a couple minutes before Dave has to run. So let me see who's in the room and then we can take some questions. Do I have to Sure. I just stop sharing. I do. Okay. I just stop sharing. Don't join. Hold on. Um, so, if anyone has a question or two, we'll take a minute to do that. I have a question. Sure. Do you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, so, my name is Sandia. Um, I guess my first question is you know, if we need to hear about um, the different, you know, service centers in the city, but I'm very curious about what possibly needs to be the additional that can be to benefit people and what it is possible. Sure, those are those are good questions. Um, so I've been four and a half years at AWS, um, and I think I have to be careful what I say, but, but um, especially because we're being recorded. But it was a great place to work. Loved a lot of the people that were there. Uh, different culture, right? Um, and I think when it boiled down to it, I was just looking to. Um, Try out another, you know, another large uh, you know, cloud provider, effectively, but another, you know, another thing type company. And an opportunity rose. It took a uh, better part of a year to actually go through, like, sort of the way this. I started at the end of last year, and so by midsummer, um, I was sort of back in the process. And uh, let's see. I mean, I don't, you know, again, I don't know how much I can or cannot say, but with Google. Um, they have different, all you know, like you'd expect out of any company. There's different ways of interviewing, different qualities that they're looking for. Yeah. Um, AWS actually had an interesting concept called the bar raiser, so they would actually have somebody in there who is trained specially to interview you, like to look, like is this person actually going to make the company better? And I think you're raising the bar. Um, Google is, I think more about they have like there's actually an element of the interview process called googliness right like there's a sort of that cultural aspect um but there's also i think there's a, a bit more of a sort of a technical proficiency sort of intellectual capacity sort of like series of questions that they put you through um which is a little different than how aws does it so um both places depends on i mean this these are really from the perspective of like pre-sales, technical sales type roles. Um, so there's an element of uh, public speaking and you know being able to interact with folks and being customer focused that they expect. Whereas like if you were going for like a software engineering role, it would be much more hands-on keyboard, actual what I I don't I can't say this for an absolute fact, but I, I, I totally believe it is that you actually a lot more of the actual process is automated. We have to like actually do coding exercises and figure things out online. Um, yeah, so you've apparently gone through that. <laughs> so, and that's just to qualify to get interviewed. And that's that's what I've heard. So, um, but get working in any of these companies is, you know, it's, it's really kind of an honor, right? I think, you know, it's definitely a, a great goal to, to have. Um, it took me a long time to look at something, but. You know, if you're smarter and more aggressive, <laughs> go for it. Um, I guess the last bit is, if you do go for like a sales role, you know, you'll have to do like a presentation usually at these things. So, um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs> Are you allowed to talk about what they ask you when they um, to be uh, to be brutally honest? I don't even remember because it was it was like a year. It was like the, what happened was they. Um, we had six people go up for a role and we all kind of made it through at the end of 2020, but they only needed one person. So that's like that guy got a nod. And then um you have the one thing I can say that's also an interesting is like it's you kind of get accepted into the organization, but then you need to find a place to actually land, if that makes sense. Like so it's not necessarily that you you kind of start off maybe hiring like interviewing for a particular role. This is the same a little bit of something like this happened to me at AWS as well. But then they change and they hire somebody you know as that's further along in the process. Um, and then sort of you have to kind of they do like a matching process to get another like a, get you hooked up with another team. So that's exactly what happened to me. We have time for one more 
question. Um, so now we have to stop at the fence because there is a, a, a median line of three. So one last question. Anybody online? Can anybody ask? Yeah, okay. I'll open here. Yeah. I just have a question. So we talk about because of different policy regionally. So the good thing about cloud is that you don't have to actually move data. You can move the logic to the data where you need to use it. Can you talk more about what is the logic that you're talking about? Um, oh, you mean in terms of the region? So if so, Hadoop is probably the best place to start with something like that because and it's sort of in a roundabout way. That was a place where where an application and an architecture that literally was okay. I've got all this different storage, and now I need to ha have basically different nodes that will take my application and deploy it closer to the storage. And so, I think the only dis if you take it sort of from a more like a forty thousand foot view, um, say I had a a bunch of data in Europe and a bunch of data in the United States, and I needed to keep all of my data in Europe there. I mean, it's, it's the same concept, like the cloud infrastructure, like if, if it's the same application that is like working against both, like both sets of data, um, it's almost trivial, I would say, in the cloud to actually say, okay, as opposed to running in the United States, you're gonna run that data in Europe yeah. or work against the data in Europe. It's just, you're using the same kinds of compute containers, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, that's why that there's a um, infrastructure as code that concept becomes really important because there you write the code once you store it in a code repository like git github and you can get lab um and then you just sort of deploy it wherever you need it and you're spinning it like it you don't have to worry about pushing buttons and so, you know like sshing into all the machines like the idea is that you're automating all of that sort of more mundane work so you can get to running your application faster and that's that's something that will really help with that yeah Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, I want to thank everybody here for coming. Thank you guys online for coming. Two quick announcements before break. One is next week we end this series of two more alumni coming back, Ryan MacLear and Freddie Hinanya, who both graduated in the past three or four years. And they're going to be talking about their careers since Bentley. I'll send out an announcement about that. And a week from Friday on the 19th, um, please come if you can to the sandbox in person. We're having our um, annual open house. It will be an in-person event here in here in here in Smith 234. Uh, the president is supposed to be coming. Uh, some other folks are going to be coming, and it will be an opportunity for you to meet some of the tutors you've seen online all the time. And also just uh, learn about um, the CI sandbox and hang out with uh, see some interesting demos on machine learning and cloud computing and virtual reality and some of the cool stuff that some of the tutors here have been working on. So um our session is a little bit briefer than usual today, but uh, better everybody made it, and hope to see you guys back here next week.